welcome friends as we come to the close of to the end of this three day event here we close this session with bashar i am very happy that i was able to spend these three days with you and i hope that you found this three days event useful in your spiritual journey those of you who felt it was useful please raise your hand that's a very good response thank you very much those who felt it was waste of time <laughs> i know you won't raise your hand <laughs> you're looking at the people next to you <laughs> i'll now summarize what we have done in the in these three days this spiritual path has two definite phases the mental phase and the spiritual phase the mental phase is where the mind can make a make an effort and get something the spiritual path is where the mind has no role at all so that is why we divided this into two because we think the whole journey can be performed by your effort which is not true so that is why i wanted to clarify that these two are separate phases on the spiritual journey the mental phase is the one that takes us through the three worlds of the mind three worlds of time and space three worlds of karma those three worlds are the physical plane the astral plane and the causal plane these three worlds are governed by the laws of time and space the spiritual journey starts from above where we discover that we are not the mind not the body not our perceptions using senses but we are life itself we are consciousness itself we are soul this discovery we make after we cross these three regions of the mind the soul then starts its real spiritual journey and that is according to great master he used to say my path starts from par brahm and in such kind my path starts from where you discover the soul and how the soul merges in its totality that's the spiritual path the spiritual path is not available very easily because there are not too many seekers of the spiritual path most of us have our desire and which they also call seeking they mix up desire and seeking as if it is for things within these three worlds if the mind is satisfied we think we have got achieved our goal of spiritual journey so there most people work with the mind and most people have desire and seeking of the mind therefore the spiritual journey is open to very few who come to seek only the highest truth and nothing but the highest truth where is the origin of everything where is our true home to which we eternally belong that is where the spiritual journey takes us and that spiritual journey is in the hands of a perfect living master a human being who comes exactly like us at the same level as us lives his life like us but his awareness extends to all these regions at the same time so that when he is amongst us he is able to guide us to every region with which he is familiar 24/7 a perfect living master is not one who has had experiences of spiritual journeys earlier and is now sharing with us a perfect living master is having that experience of all levels at the same time all the time that is why if such a human being is very different from other human beings our even the great disciples of masters they go to higher regions stage by stage step by step region by region but the perfect living master is aware of all regions at all times that is why when he talks to us gives his discourse to us he talks direct from what he is experiencing at that moment not that he has to remember what he has to tell 
Not that he has to prepare for what he has to tell, but he tells directly from what is he is knowing at that time. This is available to that perfect living master 24-7 and that is the main difference between us and a perfect living master. Otherwise, there is no difference. A perfect living master is not different in his, in his karma. He is just one human being with an existing karma, with existing sinchit karma, existing future karma, all that is intact. But because his awareness can rise above the mental states, therefore he is not affected by that. Any disciple of his who also rises above the mind is also not affected by the karmic pattern at all. Because the karmic pattern is for the body and the mind and the senses, not for the soul. And that is why the perfect living master lives his life according to the karmic pattern with which his body is born. Karma is necessary for a body to survive. Therefore, there is no difference in the pattern of karma that a perfect living master has, we have. Such a being, such a person, such a human being comes into our life when we are seeking the highest truth and are ready for it. Now, what does it mean by being ready for it? Ready means we have had enough of this world. If we think we need more, we are not ready yet. Then we should enjoy and enjoy this world more. Only when a time comes when we think this is not our place, we have had enough of it, we want to go back to our true home, that that kind of seeking arises for which a perfect living master appears in our life. When he appears in our life, he appears just like an ordinary person. And his experience is so vast that he answers our questions. He is able to tell us things which we have never heard of. He is able to explain things both temporal and spiritual. And he does not have to prepare for that. And that is one of the signs. And he speaks with authority about what he knows. He does not speak with maybes and perhapses. You will notice that in the discourses of perfect living masters, there is no perhaps or maybe. It's always a certainty because there is no doubt in what he is saying. It's a sense of certainty. Same certainty comes to his disciples who reach a state where they can cross the mind. Mind alone creates doubt and doubt creates fear. So we are governed by our minds. Therefore, we have doubts. Therefore, we have fears. And when you rise above the mind, both doubts and fear disappear completely. Your life becomes fearless and completely free of doubt. So this is a great promise that if somebody is seeking the highest, he can get it in a human form while here. The desire and seeking inside, which is intuitive, it does not come from thinking. The seeking of truth of the ultimate home is not coming from the mind, it's coming from the soul. And it's felt inwardly. Somewhere inside we feel it. Just like when we come across this perfect living master, the love we feel coming from him and our love for him is also coming from some place, not our thoughts, but from somewhere inside us. Where is that inside us? It's coming from the soul and not from the other apparatus around it, not from mind, senses or body. We are very fortunate that we have this facility and the, all the means for going to our true home are available to every human being, irrespective of where they are born, what their gender is, what their culture is, what their nation is, what their belief system is, what their religion is, makes no difference. All these things are local things that have happened here. We follow these traditions based upon where we are born. We follow the cultural values of the place we are born, the family we are born in. We live in the religion which we have been brought up in and have faith in that religion. We have all these things already in place because of our karmic pattern. But within that karmic pattern, without changing anything, without changing religion, without changing your current belief system, all you have to do is 
whether your belief system can be verified, validated by going within yourself. Because all religions do say that the truth can be found within yourself. So just a validation of your own religious belief is not something new. So that is why the distinction between spirituality and religion is simply that spirituality is still dealing with the spirit and how to go within and find out. Religion has started putting more attention on rituals and ceremonies which we do outside and not the, not the real practice of going within yourself. Religion is emphasizing rituals, ceremonies, doing things outside. And because you can make a great distinction between those rituals and ceremonies, religions fight with each other, each claiming to be the only correct spiritual way. It's amazing how they are all claiming that they are the only one that is correct. And yet each religion says, we are all children of the same God. If we are all children of the same God, how come we chose a few to belong to a particular religion? They are the only blessed ones. All others are condemned. Every religion somehow has come to this conclusion, not because of the difference in their spiritual goal, because of differences in their rituals and ceremonies outside. So this is amazing. The religions were founded by spiritual leaders. The spiritual leaders taught us that the kingdom of God is within us. The true home is within us. That we can access it as human beings. But that is not the main teaching in religion. Religion is how often you should come to the building made by us. How often you should pay homage to the articles we have placed in those buildings. How much symbolic things we have done for you follow the symbols. Nobody says that the real truth of every religion says go within and find out. Because if you were to go within and find out, you validate your own religion. You validate that the founder of your religion was saying the same thing which all other founders of religion are saying. Namely, our ultimate truth, who we are, lies within ourselves, not outside. Outside, a variety has been created. A variety of experiences, variety of forms, the variety of religions, variety of belief systems. This variety is merely you experience a greater variety of creation. That's the only purpose. The greater variety, mind loves variety. And the soul is giving life to the mind so the mind can enjoy this variety. But we create in the same mind enmity towards each other hatred toward each other because we don't follow the rituals that one religion teaches from another. So that is why the spiritual masters have come and said that you don't need to change your religion, your nationality, your anything that is you are born with, you can work on that. The endowment for finding the truth lies within each one of us. Equally, a master does not have more endowment of finding the truth that every human being has. The only thing is he has achieved it and we have the possibility of achieving it. The potential is the same. It does not mean that the master has something in him that we lack. We have the same thing in us. We are not aware of it. It's only a game of awareness. This whole spiritual path is to gain more awareness. So that is why when we gain more awareness, we become conscious of who we are. And at the end, what does the master do? He makes you like himself. When a master initiates a seeker and says, I accept you, that means you are one of those marked souls for whom I came here. When he does that, after that, his job is to make the disciple exactly with the same awareness master has, not less. He doesn't say, I'll improve your life. He doesn't say, I'll help you in this thing. He makes you like himself. In great master's time, he used to give an example that there is a philosopher's stone. If it touches iron, it becomes gold. But the master is not like that philosopher's stone 
when it touches iron it makes it into philosopher stone makes it by its, like itself so that's a great promise that is something so unique is not trying to help us do something which we uh, which we just need help with his role his role for all the dishes that he has initiated is to make them like himself and he achieved this goal without fail in every case it may take time because our karmic pattern determines events of our life including the event of meeting a master including the event of getting initiated including the event of going within including the event of reaching out to home all these events are spread out in time because everything here in this creation is spread out in time therefore it can take one year 10 years 20 years one lifetime two lifetime four lifetime four lifetimes looks very long to us it looks incredible we don't even know there will be another lifetime but when you have that vision from the causal plane you will see that all lifetimes are one series happening one after the other it's just like day and night happening here again next day we have day and night similarly life is coming like that lifetimes are coming one after the other and from that point of view you can see a million lives some you have lived and some you have not now how does that happen that there can be your lifetime which you have never lived that is because when the soul which is in a timeless state first come because when i say first it has to be first because of the time in which we are getting at what time does the soul come into this universe does it come when the creation starts or does it come anywhere in the middle the soul can come any time so therefore when a soul enters first time it has no karma the karma is still to be created then where does karma come from this is a event that takes place in the causal plane before the soul ever gets into the astral or physical plane at the causal plane we generate destinies we generate what they call pralab or the future life of a particular person so we pick up the one life we pick up one life at the causal plane as our destiny i sometimes compare them with dvds that we pick up because that's what, that can be played it also is in one compact place then it can be played it takes time similarly we pick up one life the soul picks up it says it's a wonderful free will choice of the soul not mind when the soul picks up one destiny for experience just for fun let me pick up this one or let me pick up that one the number of combination that you can have of karmic patterns is unlimited a huge choice so you look at the huge choice you say that looks like a good one and there are many considerations at that time why you choose a particular one because you have picked up a mind which can then differentiate between what you think is good or not good this differentiation comes only when you have picked up a mind first at the top of the causal plane and then you choose your destiny at that time the mind can distinguish between what it feels is good what feels is not so good and this is not felt by the soul for soul everything is good always soul considers everything is good as an experience as something wonderful to see they know good or bad for the soul for the mind it is therefore the mind is helping the soul to pick up a destiny of ours and when it picks up a destiny then we want to play it the destiny means a human life which cannot be created without karma therefore that dvd contains a past life in order to create the current life any life you pick up there has already got a past life which you never lived you come for the current life which you picked up and when you come with the current life that you pick up 
you have a past life, an emotional past life, which has the events created to create the events you picked up. You haven't lived that, but it becomes your past life when you come here first time. So therefore, the rule is not broken that you cannot have a body, cannot have a physical being without a past life karma. Therefore, the karma is placed as part of the DVD. That this is your past life. Now it will give you this. Once we come here, that past life is gone. It was not real. But then we start working with the karma which we picked up at the causal plane. And then we start generating more karma, more karma. Then we can go on for millions of lives starting from there. How many past lives are needed to create one life? The last life also must be created by another past life and another infinite number. You don't have one past life. How many future lives? Infinite. So when we say we pick up a package or a DVD from the causal plane, we are not picking up one life. We are picking up all the lives, a series of lives. How many we live will depend upon how many we want to enjoy and then walk out. We say these 10 lives look good, then I want to go back. You will live those 10 lives with millions of past lives and uh, those 10 lives are actually experienced, actually lived. On the 10th life, the perfect way master comes, you go back home and the infinite number of future lives are left right there. It is a game. It's a game we are playing of life. Game by which we pick up life like this and it is infinite life. If you don't go back, you can go for a long time. Supposing you don't even decide when to come back, then you, it's a big gamble. You take on, you can live for a very long time. And so many of us were so keen to go play the DVD quickly. We did not care to say when we should finish and come back. But many of us did. I am so happy to tell you, you were all there, you did a wise thing. <laughs> it, it's, that's what makes us a seeker at the right time, in the right life. It does not mean there are no more lives. All future lives are still there written up. But you escape. How do you escape from this whole pattern of billions of lives? You don't escape by working something better in that life. You escape by rising above to the causal plane and you stop where you made the decision to come and all that pattern is left behind. This whole physical life, the astral life, sensory perceptions which create all this experience of ours, these are all left behind when we rise above the mind. And when we are in the state of spiritual being as a soul, then we realize Oh, that was a good game we played. Maybe let's one more chance. People tell me, we never want to come back again. And when they go there and find it was just a game, I can play once more. <laughs> the soul makes a decision on whether to play this game again or another game. This is not the only part of creation. This is a very small part of creation. There are living beings in several parts of this creation at many levels, including physical level, astral level, and many more at causal level. There are several universes created. There is no end to these universes. So the soul can say, it is good enough, but I like the other one now. Let me go there. I want to play a new game. It's an amazing attitude that you get as a soul that you just played a game of life. It's not a big deal. But the game itself is so interesting. It is so beautiful that when you are in the game, you forget who you are. You forget you are a soul. You even forget how you are functioning. You begin to identify yourself with the character created for the game. And you think you are the character. That makes the game very interesting. That makes the game really good. When we have drama, movies, we see drama, movies. Do you know those actors? Who are the good actors? The best actors are those who really think they are the character. 
वन मूवी वॉज मेड कॉल्ड गांधी महात्मा गांधी ग्रेट लीडर कॉल्ड इंडिपेंडेंस फॉर इंडिया एंड द मूवी वॉज मेड गांधी ए ब्रिटिश एक्टर एक्टेड एज गांधी ही गिव एन इंटरव्यू इन इंडिया एंड ही आफ्टर द मूवी वॉज रिलीज बिकेम वेरी सक्सेसफुल ही गिव एन इंटरव्यू दैट हाउ डिड ही एक्ट सो वेल बींग ए ब्रिटिश गाय एक्टिंग लाइक एन इंडियन साधु इंडियन महात्मा he said they tried to ask me to shoot the movie i said wait unless i actually feel i am gandhi no shooting will take place he said for several months i got up every day imagining i am gandhi i am gandhi when i felt i am gandhi i said shoot now imagine the real good character who becomes a good actor is one who thinks he is the character we are all very good actors wonderful actors we think we are what our name to the body has been given is it a wonderful game that we can make it so interesting just by becoming the characters which are being played out in our dvd in our show when do we discover that this was just a show not here because we are saying this character is trying to find out something the character can't find out anything the character is going to go with the script given and where is the script of this act that we are doing which we call life the script is written in the mind what does the script contain the script contains all the events of life it also contains all the thoughts that will be accompanying us during that life also contains all the choices we will make it also contains where because of ignorance of what we have decided we we'll think we are deciding now and option will be given we'll have the right thought to come to that conclusion and we'll say we are deciding it now the whole thing will be as if you are living a real life wonderful real characters good actors real life how wonderfully we have all achieved this we have all done a good job in this but only when we go inside to the top we discover how this game is being played it's totally different the whole attitude changes even with some of the discoveries you can make in meditation with it so that is why people who are interested who are seeking the truth about this life why are we here what's the meaning of life how the drama created for life why is it created why do we choose it why are we so many characters all these questions are answered just by going with it did you see how it is all set up so that is why i say meditation is a very useful instrument for discovering how the creation takes place how it works and how lifetimes are created how past lives are created future lives are created how the series is created to follow a simple law the law of cause and effect that is what time has used to grab our attention here cause and effect that there has to be cause for everything that happens so therefore we are looking for the cause and going through the effect and there in that we create the law of karma karma is the law of cause and effect in our lives so we do something think of something there is a reaction cause creates an effect and that is why it's a big trap time cause and effect are all what we call karma negative entity the power of time so that is why this is such an interesting show going on it doesn't look so interesting if you are not aware of it awareness helps in everything have the highest awareness everything becomes a show without effort is not that you try to pretend to see it as a show you see it as a show it being set up like that but all we have done we see shows outside also we see movies let me take example we go and see a movie and we think we are sitting too far away from the screen we can take a front seat we can say we are too far from the screen front seat we can go and when we come to the stage we can't see the screen too well we say let's get into the head of one of these actors acting on the screen and you get into the head of that then you start seeing everything from there very clear much better than from the audience 
much better than the front seat. That's all we have done to create this scene here. We have just picked up one character and sat in the head of that character and watching the show that close. This is going on. We are sitting in the head of a character to whom a name has been given, name of the body, to whom a life has been given, whom a character has been given, whom a script has been given, whose destiny has been given. And we are just sitting in one of them and enjoying ourselves. Not really. Not really. It depends. Now we think our joy will come if the character has joy. That's not the script. The script gives both joy and sorrow. Gives both happiness and sadness to that character. And we suffer along with it. Oh, I am sad. Why are you sad? Watch the character. Then people say, how can we watch the character? We feel sad at our own state. I said, that's not your state. That's the state of the character in whose head you are sitting. Put yourself, even temporarily, in the head. Say, I am sitting in the head and following a show. And this is it. First character is in whose head you are sitting. The, all the others are second characters. If you look at it like that, it immediately becomes the show. Don't have to go to the causal plane. That is a good tip the masters tell us. That to live life better than we are living, always do meditation at third eye center and gradually begin to live a life that you are living in from third eye center. Then you will know this body of yours is just a character. It makes a big change in life, it makes automatically. So this is something that comes through meditation. So what we did in the mental phase helps us a lot. It helps us to discover how this world, universe is created. It helps us to understand how life is created. It helps us to understand why the life is a sort of a drama and why it's created in a certain way, what kind of scripts have been made and how we find a perfect living master by a choice we made in the series of lives that we picked up at the causal plane. All this can be revealed to us in the three worlds of the mind. The spiritual path, of course, we have nothing to do with it except seek. Seeking is all we can do, not seeking with your thoughts. Seeking with your intuition, with your soul. Some people call it heart. Some people, instead of using soul and mind, use heart and heart and head. That head is the mind and heart is the soul. So, because some uh, yogic exercises put emphasis on the heart chakra in our six chakras, therefore many have started calling it heart and head. It only means soul, intuitive self, self of feelings, and the self of the reason of reasoning or thinking. So when you have this feeling coming from the heart, from the soul, that you want to go out, mind is saying, enjoy here. And the soul is saying, no, I've had enough of it. And that is a good sign of readiness to go beyond the mind. So when that, that kind of feeling comes, a perfect living master, by coincidences, by chance, strangely appears in our life. And if we were to look back five years earlier than the meeting with a perfect living master, we cannot ever imagine that we would meet one. And yet, when he appears, it looks like just a normal course of events. Such are the coincidences that happen that bring a perfect living master into our life. When he comes, he picks us up. We are pulled by his love. We feel something instantly, there is something going on here. And as our mind creates doubt and fear, and then the soul spoon becomes bigger, the mind is overridden by the soul's love, by the master's love, and we are accepted by the master. And thereafter, the whole job is of the master to take us back to our true home. Our mind doesn't believe it. The mind says, how can poor master do this? I was very surprised first time I came to this country, United States, and I met some seekers, initiates of different masters here. When I got a chance to talk to them, 
They said, I have a deal with the master who can give anything. They said, what unfair person you are to put that burden on a poor man. I said, who are you calling poor man? A man who knows the whole universe create, is one with the creator of the universe. You're calling him a poor man? They were, How can you put that burden on him of your responsibility? You should take responsibility. That's how the mind functions. The mind separates. The mind does not like oneness. The mind likes manyness all the time. The mind likes to divide. The mind's method is to divide and find out. So that is why uh, they do not understand who a perfect living master is. And the mind still argues. Even after initiation, even after the master has told the soul is satisfied, the mind is not. The mind says that, what am I supposed to do? Mind can't be idle. Mind says, what should I do now? Masters have a ready answer. A good one. Meditate. <laughs> That's a good answer. Keeps the mind busy. Mind says, yeah, that makes sense with my meditation. I will put my effort and I'll see something. It's understandable. Okay, you see something, put your effort. Keep your mind busy. Keep your mind occupied. If you can't, mind is scattered with so many things all over the world. If this can put the mind in one frame, less distracted, maybe it will get so busy with the meditation, master can do his job and pull the soul back to true home. That is how the setup is. So therefore, when we have finished our course of mental things, which is very good in a sense that the mind is always curious. This curiosity is satisfied to a large extent by going through these mental regions. The soul is not satisfied. Soul is only satisfied if it goes back to its true home. Soul is not satisfied even when it discovers itself. It wants to be in its true home, there it belongs. Which is the true home is totality, where everything is total. Nothing is outside of it. That is our true home. Nothing is outside of it. And we have divided these experiences and feel we are outside of it. And therefore the awareness has to be brought back to where we really are. I am very happy that you joined me for this. The spiritual path is very simple. Seek inside yourself. Seek in the heart and the soul. A perfect living master will certainly appear in your life at the right time. When you are ready, when you are ready, he will accept you. And that acceptance is called initiation. By the way, some people think initiation means to how the master teaches us how to meditate. That's not initiation at all. Initiation is a master accepting the soul. Now I have accepted you, I am going to take you back home. Period. Initiation does not mean teaching meditation. Meditation can be learned from anywhere, including books, including some video talks on YouTube. So these are not something so great to learn how to meditate. And there's so many, so much literature available on it in different forms. Initiation is initiation is a bond of friendship between the soul of the master in the physical plane and the soul of the disciple in the physical plane, joining hands, go back home together. The master is already there and the soul travels in a wonderful way along with the master there. This journey is different from other journeys. Here, except for reaching one stage, just the inner seat from where we start, the journey is not performed alone by us. Is with the master. The master who initiates us manifests himself at the time of initiation. So anytime we go have the capability of going within, he is there. Therefore, you are able to see the master inside and the master after that to all higher journey, all higher levels of consciousness is always with you. So this is therefore not a journey alone. You are journeying with your best friend. Why do I call him best friend? Because once a master says, you are my friend, I can guarantee he will be your friend forever. No matter what. No matter what happens. 
If once a perfect living master says to somebody, I am your friend, he is a friend forever. So that is why it is not ordinary friendship which can break. This is unbroken, infinite friendship that never ends. Looks simple statement in a physical plane. I am your friend. Where we really find what it meant when you go away. There you find he was really always with us. Therefore, this journey is different. But it is like saying, come to that meeting point, we'll go together. There's a reason for that. They used to give example, great master used to say, I'm waiting at the railroad station. Come and join me about the tickets for the train. So we have difficulty reaching the railroad station. More, later, some others began to say airport. We are going to fly from the airport. Master is holding the tickets. He says, reach the airport and we'll fly together. The flight is a long flight. The airport is not that far. You'll be able to go. And we are struggling. Will he really be there or not? Can we be sure or not? And those mind doubts are creating a problem for us to reach the, air, the airport. Or to reach the third eye center in the top of the sky where you see the master. So, the reason why this has been introduced is because if it was made obvious here and a perfect living master appears here, most of the world will flock to him and go back home if they can see right here what is there. Therefore, perfect living master does hide in the very first step behind our eyes at the airport from where we take the flight. So, our job, he gives meditation, all that is just to reach the airport. Our responsibility, if we think we have a mental responsibility to reach somewhere, is to the airport. Our meditation is intended only to reach there. After that, you can leave it to the friend to take you back home. It's that simple. So, all that we have been talking in the last three days is how to reach the airport. That's the main thing. The rest is very easy. If somebody else who has already flown millions of times on that route, is there waiting for us with tickets. We fly with that person. So this is exactly the role of a perfect living master. It's a, it's a perfect living master takes you to various levels of awareness. And those levels of awareness can hold you back because of distraction, the way the worldly physical distractions hold us back. As, that's also good to remember. That the perfect living master says, let's go back. And we say, I love this. I've never seen this beautiful astral plane. I didn't know that galaxy existed with similar beings like us. I want to spend some time there. I say, okay, have a good time. And when you're ready, we'll go. We're already on the journey. I won't send you back. But enjoy what you have. We go to the causal plane seeing the universe is being created. I never imagined that this is a real thing. And I am really interested in this. The mind is there. Mind is still there. The mind is still there in the physical plane, in the astral plane, and the causal plane. So the desire of the mind, curiosity of the mind has not gone. So therefore, many of the souls initiated by perfect living masters are still there in those regions. Just fulfilling. Some say, Master, please. We don't want to see anything. We had enough of all experiences. We don't care for astral plane, causal plane. As to says, come with me, hold my hand. I put a, I put a uh, eye shade on you. I'll put a back bandage on your eyes so you can't see and let's fly. You fly ignorant, where is the astral plane, where is the causal plane? And he says, open your eyes with the soul. That also happens. It depends so much on the type of seeking we have, the type of interest we have developed during our lives here, and how much we are interested in sightseeing. Not a lot of people want to go the scenic route and say people want to go straight home. Both are possible. And so much depends on our seeking. So I am very happy to share all these things with you and I have summarized that these are the steps we take. First step, must settle yourself. Feel you are sitting in the head, not on the chair, not on the ground. You are sitting in the head. 
make your chair make your mat whatever you want to sit make your carpet inside by imagination make it as beautiful as you can so it's not a ugly place to go to beautiful it attracts you the way you beautify things outside beautify that place inside sit in the middle enjoying that scene which you just created with your own imagination and do everything as if you're doing it in that chamber around you the space is around you that space by the way is not that small as the head you must have felt when you sit there there's plenty of space to move around even to go around and look for a window and fly out that space can expand bigger than the space of this universe that space which is just i'm telling my imagination when you sit there that space around you we make it small to make it like a meditation chamber like a house top of the house but it can expand to an unlimited degree and that can become a sky by itself the space inside so if you sit there patiently don't be in a rush don't be in a hurry do these things stage by stage as you make small progress step by step when you get accustomed to that then start your meditation as if you are meditating there not out here that's the difference if you meditate inside it's a different thing than meditating outside if you meditate thinking you are sitting on a chair and meditating you don't go anywhere your attention remains here I have been to my friend's homes where they told me we have a very special chair for meditation. You want to see that? I said I certainly would like to see. It. They take me to a special room, a chair covered with nice, colorful cloth, and you know, separate from other furniture. And they said this is where we meditate. I said let me sit on it and see if I can meditate. So I sit on it. Wow! All my thoughts, beautiful chair. Wonderful cover. I can see the color of the cloth that is on the chair. That's all I meditate on. They call so special. When anything is special, we give more attention to it. So when we make a special chair, we give attention to a special chair. If we have a special room, this is my meditation room I have set up. I said, how did you make it a meditation room? I painted with light blue color, color of love. I've seen these things. and i put color of love and spiritual color i said okay i don't go and sit in that and enjoy that beautiful blue room of yours i sit in the middle all blue room the light blue room is coming what else do i get colors of what's outside of me that because so special it's specially designed for meditation so you meditate on the blue color if you like blue color please paint the inner wall of your Third eye center with blue. If you like a particular kind of chair, imagine that chair right inside and sit on there. This is very important. That should be the starting point of your meditation. Once you settle there, then start the repetition of words of the Simran mantra that is given to control the mind, to empower yourself, to remove negativity, and to move forward as you concentrate your attention there. again be patient it doesn't happen immediately because the mind will keep on running out you saw that here in the exercises here even with your best effort with all the imagination mind was still thinking of outside things that is what takes time the distractions we have created ourselves are taking time and that is why be patient gradually it will happen that these things will become more interesting than outside inner experience will become more interesting than outside then only distractions will end and, and not take you out so have patience a long term thing so it's not a short program so once you have reached that point then you fly you fly you will see master space master form at a distance you see master there he come and go In the beginning just a glimpses the beginning just glimpses of everything sometimes you can have a glimpse of higher awareness you can see in or peep in to higher awarenesses and you can see in orange sky sometimes you can see white light you know such a great light which is never seen before all those things happen like glimpses including the master space 
comes as a glimpse. But once your attention is more on that, the master's face comes closer and becomes steady. You stabilize it. Master is not going anywhere. It's our attention. It's our attention that is moving. And that's why we don't get that steady face straight away. It takes time. But once you have the master, talk to him like we talk to you. Be friendly. You'll be surprised how quickly that part takes place. That master is your friend with you. You enjoy that so much. Let's do everything together. And after that, everything in the inner world is done with master. And master knows everything. The whole route to our true home, he knows very well. So it's a very enjoyable trip then back home. So that is why spend time, I'm only saying, have patience. And from that point onwards, master can take over. He will take you to the causal plane, where you will see that the destiny you lived is dropped there when master pulls you with his love beyond it. Individual souls, some of them who reach there with masters who could take them there, have discovered that the truth is higher and they don't want to be reborn again to find another master. They are sitting in the causal plane at the top. They cannot cross it. Symbolically, it is described as a great darkness. A whirling darkness. Bhavar Gufa. That is a cave that is whirling around. Cave because it's dark. And it's whirling around. If you get in, you come out the same way. You don't even know it's moving. The space is moving. So that is why the, the crossing of that does not take place without a perfect living master. And if you are really seeking here and are stuck there because the master did not take you beyond, you can actually meet the master who is alive here, over there, and request to go forward. He'll say, come back into this world and you'll find a perfect living master. That is how the pattern has been set. And this happens to many souls. They do come back, become human beings again. Follow the simple pattern, find a perfect master, go through the mind, go through the whole process and go back home. So I'm giving you some very small details of what can happen. Many, I have not read any books, so I don't know if they are all in the books, but they are all part of your experience if you want to try it out. So once again, thank you very much for joining me. I hope, as you said, this will be useful time with this. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed sharing all this with you. I enjoyed doing this seva for my master, Baba Saban Singh. I'm very happy he gave me opportunity for seva today as he has given opportunity all my life. Any opportunity you get for seva for the master, don't miss it. I'm telling you it's a great thing. Seva for master is a great thing. The reward is immense. But don't look for the reward. It comes immense if you don't look for it. Just to save up as an offering. Thank you very much. And we'll have now a distribution of prashad. Prashad is blessed food. This is an old tradition. It's a very old tradition of uh, distributing something, some food or something blessed so that uh, people can carry it home, eat it, and think of the master, think of the spiritual path, think of their journey inside. It's just to make you remember the master and your spiritual path. So, as I always say, this prashad does not mean it has changed the molecular structure of the food or it becomes something new. It's still the same food. But it has been blessed. Blessing <coughs> means when you take it, it reminds you who gave it. It reminds you where you got it. And that helps you to keep in touch with the master and keep in touch with your spiritual journey.